Here's another example that I want you to try. So pause the video and work through this one and just remember our steps for finding LCD to factor and then build our list. So pause the video and then come back and we'll work through the answer together. To find LCD, we're starting with factor the denominators. On the left side, two terms. So we're thinking, is there a GCF? And there is. A 5 we could divide out from each term. That will leave us with an x plus 2 in parentheses. On the right side, there is no GCF. So is there a different type of factoring we could use here? Well, it's two terms. That leads us to think about, do we have maybe a difference of squares, or perhaps it's a cubes pattern? Well, this is definitely our difference of squares. And we factor it x plus 2 times x minus 2. If this type of factoring is not smooth, I recommend that you go back and review factoring binomials and other types of factoring. We just want our factoring to be smooth by the time we are doing adding and subtracting with rational expressions. OK, but what is next after we have our two denominators factored? We're going to build this LCD. I'm starting to give a lot of it away there. But think about what, what we do. We look at each type of factor we see and think, how many times do we need it in our LCD? So we thought about 5. It's on this side once. On this side, not at all. So once is enough. x plus 2, we've got it once on this side and once on this side. And remember, where do we see it the most? It's a tie, but it's just once. We would not want to say there are a total of 2, so we need to use 2. This has 1. This has 1. 1 is enough in terms of x plus 2. And finally, x minus 2. There's 1 from this denominator but none over on this side, so 1 is enough for our LCD. And we won't do any multiplying or any FOIL. That is a good-looking LCD. Here's our next example. It's a beefy one. First of all, we have three fractions. So when we're finding our LCM, we need to account for all three denominators. But our steps are still the same. So let's start with factoring. Can we factor this trinomial? And of course, you're thinking about factoring first. Is there a GCF? Yes, we can divide out a 6 from all three of these terms. The 6 is out front of parentheses. And when we divide the 6 out, we're left with x squared plus 7x plus 10. Now, the numbers out front, we usually like to see prime factors. So we could take that 6 a step further and write it as 2 times 3. But what about this trinomial? Could we factor this further? Hopefully, this is standing out as a trinomial that fits one of our patterns. To factor it, we would look for the pair of numbers that multiplied together equals 10, added together would equal 7, those numbers positive 2 and positive. So there are the factors of our denominator. OK, so just a quick run through. First, we found GCF, which was 6. And that left us with x squared plus 7x plus 10 in parentheses. The 6 we factored a little bit more just into its prime factors, 2 times 3. And this trinomial, we definitely want to see that we could factor that further into x plus 2 times x plus 5. And what we have left in parentheses are things that cannot be factored further. So there are all of our prime factors for that denominator. The next denominator, there is a GCF, a 10, we can divide out from each of our two terms. It goes out front. The 10, we could probably break that up into prime factors, 2 times 5. How about x squared minus 25? Can we factor this further? Yep, definitely. That's a, a difference of squares, x plus 5 times x minus 5. There is our second denominator completely factored. How about this last denominator, x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x? There's a GCF here. It's not a number, but each of these terms does have an x that we can divide out, leaving us with x squared plus 3x plus 2. Can we factor that trinomial further? We can. x plus 2 times x plus 1. OK. So our first move is factor every denominator. Next, building the LCD, same approach, but now we're looking at each of our three denominators. So we'll start with twos. How many twos do we need? This side has one. In the middle, we have one. 
Over here we have none. Remember, we're not looking at that. That's a different type of thing. So we just need one, two in the LCD. We'll also need one, three and one, five. And then we move on to our binomial factors. Let's think about x plus two. This side has one of them. Our middle, our middle denominator doesn't have an x plus two at all. And we see it once over here. The most we ever see in x plus 2 is just once, so we use 1 in the LCD. How about x plus 5? We've got 1 here, there's 1 here, none in this list. So just 1 x plus 5 is good enough. And remember, every single type of factor needs to be accounted for. So what have we left out? An x minus 5, none over here, 1 in the middle, none over here, so one of those is enough. And there's one more piece we haven't talked about, the x plus 1. X, we, if you see that x plus 2, we already accounted for that. We saw it once here and once here, and there it is once. But that x plus 1 we have not used. So we need to see that once also in the LCD. Okay, our numbers multiply together, 30, and then x plus 2 times x plus 5 times x minus 5 times x plus 1. That was a very lengthy LCD, and it's only because once we had things factored, we saw how many different kinds of parts we had. And I just spotted, I neglected it, there's an x right there. That also needs to be in our LCD. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So there was an x that we left out, we that I left out, and uh, so it does belong in our LCD, 30x at the beginning, and then our x plus 2, x plus 5, x minus 5, x plus 1. Now just a little lesson to be cautious, and that when we're building our LCD, make sure that every single piece is accounted for. Here's one final example for you to try. So pause the video, work through this example, find the LCD, and then restart the video. We'll go through the answer together. First, hopefully you spotted that there is a GCF number and letter both actually we could divide a two from each of these terms and there is an x we can bring out from each term so our gcf from that first denominator 2x leaving behind x squared plus 2x plus 1. now the 2x we know we're spotting that as a 2 and an x separately the trinomial we could factor further it's x plus 1 times x plus 1 and if you were writing this as x plus 1 squared with an exponent of 2, no problem. That definitely works also. How about our middle denominator? There is a GCF. It's a 4x squared this time. Definitely the 4 we could divide out from each. But x's, with 4x's in our first term and 2x's in the second, we have enough to bring 2x's out in the GCF, 4x squared. And then we have a binomial factor left over x squared minus 1. The 4, now we do like our number parts to be prime factors. We can break that 4 into 2 times 2. We know our x squared is representing 2x's. And then can we factor further this difference of squares? Yep, that's the x plus 1 times x minus 1. So this denominator completely factored. We have for our prime factors 2 times 2, and then 2x's, and an x plus 1, and an x minus 1. Finally, our last denominator, there's a GCF, 6x. I, I really bombarded you with GCFs in this example. 6x we could divide out from each term. That would leave us with x minus 1 in parentheses. We cannot factor the x minus 1 further, but the 6, perhaps it's going to be useful for us to see that x as 2 times 3. And then the x, and then our binomial factor, x minus 1. Let's build the LCD next piece would be the x's. So this side we have 1x, middle we have 2x's, here we have 1x. So the most places, the place where we see the most x's in the, is in the middle, where we see 2, so our LCD needs 2x's, x squared. So it's at the first spot where we saw the most, we actually had 2, and we need to use both. There's our x plus 1 squared, representing that we have 2 x plus 1's. And finally, would be the x minus 1. And there are all the pieces for our LCD. We'll multiply the number parts together and end up with 12x squared times x plus 1 squared times x minus 1.